Alright, so I'm back. What are we going to talk about this time? Really just be talking, isn't it? I hope I'm not talking to dead air. <laughs> Sometimes I get the feeling I've been permanently shadow banned. <laughs> That's fine. Whatever. Okay. So, let me just switch hands here. The subject is Libertyville, the sphere of liberty. First, let's define the pillars of liberty. Okay, I may talk a little bit slow, and my videos are a little bit probably too long. But I can't apologize because uh, I feel I need to be deliberate and uh, I'm not working off a script. I'm just thinking about and expressing things I've thought about for a long time. Okay, so here we go. Libertyville, the sphere of liberty. So when we come up to the pillars of liber liberty, we have uh, four, as it turns out. Two are expressed in the Constitution. Yeah. So, life. Is it freedom? No, free. The state of free. Okay. Then we have... Duty. That's actually stated in the... <laughs> when you, If you're an immigrant and you come here to... Uh, America it's in there you know you have a duty to uphold uh, for your citizenship but unfortunately that's not expressed in the constitution itself mm, not really not as far as I know okay then we have something called probe or probius Okay, so, in my life, in order to sustain myself, I must be free. Somebody is up at this hour. Uh, roommates. I hate drunk roommates. I really do. I shouldn't hate people. But foul, drunk people. I just have a problem with that. Well, anyhow. Uh, life. Propelling myself through a free market. I must be free. So I must uh, have as much liberty as possible. And not be saddled by undue regulations, inane, maybe even spiteful regulations. You know, you know to prosper really. So through the my state of free freedom in my life, I am then propelling myself through the will of my self-powered being, will to power, yeah, it does work, okay, so, then we have the free markets, right, so what does that say, that capitalism is just not a novel idea, or something not to be taken too seriously, because there's just better ideas out there, you know, that's not true. You know, capitalism is the free markets. Um, there's no other way to see that. You know, it's, it's necessary for any nation to be a capitalist free market country. So, well, how does duty come up in the sphere, in the sphere of liberty here? 
well, the, it's another pillar. So we say our duty is to ourselves uh, to set up a cycle where I work, I pay taxes, the government takes care of infrastructure, keeps those roads maintained so I may continue to go to work. So we see a good cycle that is set up, and that is a duty um, for us to at least <laughs> look for work, you know, we should at least look for work. <laughs> now you can say that's a duty, you know, um, which is interesting, welfare to work, does that include duty? duty to, towards your citizenship to be a productive member of civilization well sure that's why welfare should always be welfare to work and or volunteerism to fill in any gaps fill in those gaps where, where there's uh, no work available sure because that uh, that's, uh, shows effort and it's uh, it's something you put on your resume really so the government should be helping people to volunteer while there's no work and uh, continuously look for work until they do, in fact, find a job, you know. All right, so then we have probe, intellectual probe, the ability to ask any question of the government and the demand for an answer and the demand that people in the government also probe Uh, by science and look for all processes, all usages. So the idea there is we have right as a sovereign individual to use our minds to probe people in the government. We demand them to adhere to science and processes and logic, uh, logistics. A good example of that is, you know, everybody wanted that high-speed rail in California. And uh, turns out the logistics, they really weren't thinking about that in the... Uh, extreme expense of just buying um, property and calling it public domain at to public domain prices really and uh, you know because you know some places uh, you have to, the government cannot buy for pennies on the dollar it has to be a fair market value <laughs> so that's a good good uh, example of why you know we do need science and we do need to look at not just the science of if it's possible but is it practical is there a logistics involved in that that prohibits uh, such a thing from being created you know so all those work all together the intellectual probe finding things out. And then we have people, places, and things. All right, so we place people, places, and things. And that's the logistics. And then we use the logic to figure all that and probe to find out all the costs involved for all things. And then we come up with these extremely exhaustive reports on the economy where everything is figured as far as it can be you know and um, that way no one can ever argue about anything and that's why we have to re recognize four pillars in the sphere of uh, liberty um, because accuracy is deadly. You know what I'm saying? 
that accuracy will cut out so many arguments. In fact, accuracy and will cut out socialism. You know, um, once you get down to the nuts and bolts of economics, uh, socialism it just falls to pieces in favor of a capitalist idea, a free market idea. And that's always true. And uh, then we get to extreme reduction of government, automated government, sure. And all that stuff helps too, you know. And privatizing, say, uh, the mail, the post office. And then, um, you know, I'm not one of those crazy people that think you should privatize the court systems. You know, private private corporations of judges. And, of course, that it would severely impinge. Actually, that would be a, um, that would, I guess you could say divorce or liberties. And that would never be a good idea. We cannot uh, have a disconnect between the court systems and due process and the government ever. So, um, yeah, that's just about it. Uh, thanks for tuning in.